Today we're looking at a authentic vintage, of course, Native American flat. That means flat bag. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of work, and it has a defining characteristic, which I'm sure you've noticed. First, though, uh, these bags were used just for a simple utilitarian purpose, uh, and they were woven out of corn husks, stuff like that, and they were decorated on both sides with geometric patterns, that kind of thing. Well, it was the uh, introduction of colored glass beads by the European trade, European colonial trade, that really allowed this art form to explode. And this was particularly popular in the Plateau region, so between the Rocky Mountains and the Cascade Mountains, uh, and that's why it's called a Plateau Flat. And anyway, you can see how traditional and modern iconography would be mixed, because we saw the American flag a second ago, but then this looks much more traditional here. Later on, but still in like the late frontier area, you know, the beginning of modernity, uh, you even had kind of like an Andy Warhol-esque thing, where Native American artists would take inspiration from just different publications, you know, uh, company logos, things like that. And these are highly collectible today. Uh, they would be, they're real objects of expression. So you have religious beliefs, pop culture type stuff, traditional patterns, you name it. So just looking at the tassels here, you've seen that kind of decoration on different weapons that I've shown in the past as well. But even though we're not looking at the uh, swastika at this moment, let's move on to what we would have called a swastika. And that symbol, of course, turns out to be indigenous to the Americas and many other parts of the world, and it's a truly ancient symbol that many different cultures seem to have come up with independently. Although that gets complicated because there's definite theories of transmission. Anyway, like in Sanskrit, this means well-being. Uh, in the New World, this was the whirling log. That's one name among others. There's a hero myth story where this is the symbol of the hero's canoe spinning in a whirlpool. Uh, it was a healing symbol for some. For the Hopi, it was a tracing of their migratory routes. It was also used by sun cult worshippers. Uh, you name it. Very uh, versatile symbol. And it's interesting how it was used in different ways throughout the earth. That includes Rome, Africa, India, Armenia, Iran... And it may, in fact, be the ultimate case of cultural appropriation, where once Hitler and the Nazis co-opted it, it became inseparable from them in people's minds. Native American artists have even gotten into trouble. That's maybe too strong of a description, but anyway, you know, uh, over its use in the post-World War II era. Uh, this one here would be about very early 20th century, uh, maybe older. And it's a really interesting piece of work. I definitely want to include more in the future on my channel, uh, but the... Uh, you know, quote-unquote swastikas definitely made this one jump right out. And it's an artistic success, though, uh, with or without those. Uh, but I like how they used them to arrange the kind of corners of the piece. Anyway, hope you enjoyed checking this out. One final look. Thanks.